thanks a lot saurabh for joining us today uh, we are glad to have you in the session uh, so guys before we start today's session i would like to give you all a little brief about pragmatic leaders at pragmatic leaders see all are part of a global family of aspirational professionals who are invested in each other's career growth pragmatic leaders functions like a full stack global career accelerator that rest on three core pillars pillar 1 is educate we help you upskill by our proven courses and scientifically backed pedagogy uh, we do so by our two job guarantee programs designed for folks uh, looking to transition into product role or existing product managers who uh, who are looking to upskill themselves uh, we have also recently launched a platform called pragmatic live for working professionals to attend live bite sized interactive classes by industry practitioners under three learning tracks product data and design so if you want to know more about these uh, courses or classes you can ping me uh, pillar 2 is engage we run a global community of product managers on slack with access to online and offline meetups i have just shared the link of our slack community in chat section uh, pillar 3 is employ Uh, with over 79% placement success and $600,000 of cumulative salary hike we operate a job platform and dedicated interview preparation courses to help you crack your dream jobs so uh, along with the uh, long duration job guarantee programs so yeah with that note let's begin the session now uh, saurabh has already joined us and i hope you are all are excited for today's session uh, so saurabh i would like you to take over the session from here Uh, hey everyone. So as uh, Piyush mentioned, uh, my name is Aurobindo, and of course, thank you uh, for taking our time. It's a bit late in India also, and for folks who are joining from other places. Uh, for me, I mean, uh, the topic is fairly simple. Uh, I don't think uh, it would have something out of the world for you, but uh, these are simple uh, mindfulness uh, learnings I have had in my experience, and how these have impacted me to learn better. Uh, and we'll quickly jump into. Uh, what i have done and um, you know if there is uh, anything interesting i have done so i think it 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 is a very typical uh, story which a lot of especially i can uh, say that a lot of uh, you know young indians go through that i went to a college uh, uh, which was a fashion technology college called nift then work out left in few days joined engineering which is always a default path uh, uh, was juggling around few startups ended up into product management and has always been studying public policy and law uh and why i'm saying it's a typical indian story is because a lot of product managers you will talk to uh they would come from engineering background but a lot of them would end up having interest in other fields and i specifically want to highlight that when you pursue fields like product management which can often be very generic roles uh you would want to have diversity in your thoughts and that is actually what really makes this role very exciting i'm working at paypal right now it's a payment uh, global payment company uh in uh, you might have seen it in some uh, of the websites in india as a option to pay in past i was at ptm it's um, another payment startup doing very well uh, a lot of my learnings actually came from that journey was into career 360 that's a edtech and media company and uh, was juggling into some other edtech ideas so i think the reason i started actually by saying that i dropped out from a college is also because a lot of us often make wrong decisions and we need to acknowledge that taking a wrong decision is most likely not a bad choice in a lot of cases because they eventually end up turning out good for you but those decisions would actually dictate what you are truly passionate about and edtech uh, and finance became one of my areas where i felt i have learned from my personal experiences where i didn't had uh, learnings and it became a personal passion for me too okay um and some thumb rules as we start into the session uh, i i know we generally structure it uh, what you told me to have few initial half into uh, me covering that but i would appreciate i mean whenever you have question just feel free to jump in feel free to drop chat i have chat open in my other screen uh, so i think it would it would be much easier to have that engagement uh, from the beginning uh, than waiting for for the last you know of uh, uh, second half of the uh, discussion okay uh, so starting with mindfulness many of you who practice uh, meditation in any way or however you keep yourself focused would be aware of it and it exactly means being aware about what's happening in your surrounding and being conscious about those things and the reason i bring it up is also because being a product manager it, it is a challenging role and it can be a very lonely role uh, 
but a lot of responsibility really lies on you when i say responsibility it can mean from what you are really delivering to the customer and can also mean you are impacting life of user in very different ways because you are changing their behavior of how they see some of those things and if we look at actions happening in last few months uh, whether you talk about uh, a 20 year old ki- uh, kid killing himself because he saw a balance on a payments app uh, investments app in us or many such examples you see a lot of products do discriminate are not really meeting the standards they should and we need to acknowledge and be aware that what we build is really impacting people just beyond you know being a utility app for them so be mindful when you are moving to product management or you are a product manager it would sound very easy that uh, to to outside world that okay being aware is easy but i think it would become a very hard journey as you dive deeper because of so much dimension you have to really cover into that uh it's one of my favorite jokes uh which i keep sharing with my friends and i think uh, a lot of you would have seen it uh, floating around social media and to people who are planning to move into product management i'm not trying to scare you but i just want you to realize some part of reality that uh, the the role can be very tricky because it's a very powerful role with most often not a lot of power in your hands which means that you really need to learn how to navigate across organizations still be very influential and still be very humble because in this role not a lot of people can really succeed by being rude by being a uh, not collaborative and your job would be to really bring together all the people together of how they uh, how they build their products now some of you uh, might have already worked into these domains many of you might be working into these domains and might be planning to transition into product management so i quickly want to touch base on what it really means to learn from a user because user can be anyone user can be your end customer user can be people around them user can be your business partners and a lot of data really chime in into that discussion when you are making any kind of decision whether it's about what you want to build as a product how you want to iterate it or even moments when you want to decide that okay is this product not relevant for the market and we need to sunset that product so qualitative quantitative research uh, very intuitive usability test a lot of companies do that and a lot of companies are still into that journey where they would have set up to validate ideas much before they go live and how it plays a key role especially for bigger companies because they invest a lot before a idea really goes to the market and it can be a 6 month to 2 year journey where uh, a lot of testing is happening a lot of validation with users is happening and then only the product really surfaces because of the risk appetite you know different companies can have other data points can be how you collect data from social media people are talking about it sentiment analysis which is a broader term um, of that and predictive data analytics where you are monitoring what people are saying about you on and off the platform and how can that chime in into your product roadmap now i am categorizing this discussion into three parts one is what it really means to listen to customers so we define some ground rules that when i say listen to customer what do i mean because then there are some people who say that don't listen to the customer and we would dive into that that when some people say that what does it really mean and then we would quickly talk about when we don't listen to customer what can be the consequences and as product managers because we are responsible for the growth of product for the pnl of product these factors always need to be top of our mind when we are making a decision and again it's fine for a decision to be wrong the point here is to be conscious about the decisions you are making that you have mitigated all the surrounding elements which should impact the decision so one first part uh as a product manager you would always have to acknowledge is the scale you are operating at and what that really means is if you are operating into a b2b space let's say you are a services company product manager you are building a product specifically for a fortune 100 company for example you need to think specifically on what that customer truly needs one of the examples i came across when i was doing customer discovery uh, in brazil in 2018 was we were visiting a, a a manufacturing plant and we were seeing the interfaces of how ui was built now that ui would look to you like something you probably would have seen in windows 98 and we were curious that why there is always a resistance in industries to really update those experiences uh, into their hardware and the 
answer we repeatedly learned was the people who are operating over there only would be able to operate with that and they don't want to go through the transition of learning the new material design patterns and you know how design is really evolving so as as product managers who might be operating in b2c space you would have to cater to your customers that if they are used to using their android and ios apps across uh, you know the spectrum they are using you would have to find ways to reduce the learning curve of your product when you are launching a new product or even if you are an existing company so identifying the area you really operate into uh, and acknowledging what your customer would really want uh, is is a very fundamental thing a lot of times we often assume that we know what's best for the customer and we start making decisions for them and customers might still use you because they might not have an alternative but the fact of the matter would remain that the moment they would get get a ba- better product than yours they would always end up hopping over there and that is one thing you would see specifically in indian market that and and being a culprit of that because i have worked into that uh, you would not see product loyalty at a lot of scenarios uh, people might hop on because of offers people might hop on because of better experience people might hop on because a better brand offered a similar product where they are able to trust them better or even really good marketing uh, which emotionally connected to people and they would decide to move on that side of the fence uh, another thing to touch is specifically on culture a, a lot of us work in one market products but even in one market product and especially for countries like india it is so diverse i cannot stress on this enough uh, many of you are joining from different parts uh, and we all know how different people uh, think or people react uh, in northern part or southern part of india and sometimes our biases just kick in we might not want them to but as a product manager you really need to be sensitive about how cultures think about it how they would react if they are using your product and would that mean uh, anything negative for them when you are uh, surfacing your product experience to them and one such experience is of pampers it's a png product very very big company and uh, some of you might have heard about uh, this uh, disaster which happened with with them when they launched in japan market uh, in in western countries it's a very famous uh, story of that the babies are brought by a fox it's a bird but when they launched in japan they ended up launching with this but if you talk to a japanese or people who understand about japanese market they would tell you that there is no relevance of a bird bringing babies into uh, into their life but what stories they have is about a giant peach that the babies come from giant peaches and if you have heard about uh, those child stories you would be able to relate to that what ended up happening is people actually felt scared that the bird is not a positive sign for the baby and it might take away the baby and they ended up not using the product now this is just one example the, you would find so many examples uh, like this for example i was recently uh, reading about how coke had many disasters uh, you know across the timelines one such is when they launched a campaign you might have seen the coke cans which had names written um, of many people like especially the common names and people would you know go and buy over there they would see their name they would take a picture they would be sending uh, to their friends and family they would be posting on social media but when they launched in israel they used common israeli names but again israel is high on one religion or one um, uh, community but it does has its own diversity and inclusivity and they ended up completely skipping a segment of names and that turned out to be a disaster for them and they faced the major backlash uh, uh, in israel same happened with them in sweden where they ended up not using uh, uh, some names because of religious reasons and it is so insensitive to decide in that sense and would always fire back for the brand especially when cultural sensitivity is increasing uh, so highly in the world another part is language again i'm going to bring it back to india because we have so many languages if you move across the globe uh, the language diversity is so high that surviving on one language can become difficult for a product english would remain a ubiquitous uh, language a lot of apps would continue supporting as a primary language but when you want to tap into user base who would want to use it how they talk and communicate you would see a lot of even indian apps moving into multiple languages and especially global apps would always be supporting uh, the regional languages and sometimes even the different dialects one example of that 
which you guys would have seen often happening is with arabic now any of you know uh, arabic or urdu you would know that the language is not read uh, very similar to how you read english it's read from uh, right to left uh, now when facebook launched this page they had the similar problem where the translations were done wrong some words can end up being insensitive uh, even in case of non facebook scenarios there have been cases where multi uh, country brands have ended up launching a campaign when people read it in reverse it had totally different meaning and again coke example you might have um, heard in this scenario also so i think what i'm coming to is even though you might not know the language as a product manager you should tag team with your product marketing people your go to market people your research people to identify if you are launching in a different geography that you don't understand what are the top learnings you need to be aware about that region okay i'll just quickly read a comment uh, manuj has shared that to share an instance where you were hoping for customers to another product was really easy and what happened hey uh, manoj do you mind going on mute and uh, just explaining your question i was not able to understand yeah hi parik uh, this is manoj so uh, i wanted to understand uh, do you have some examples where uh, you told that uh, Uh, you found out that hopping on for customers to another product was really easy so uh, can you give some instance related to that and what were the learnings around that and how can we use that further in our uh, product management uh, decisions okay so i'll give my personal example because i don't want to be specific to uh, some brands uh, i was always using for example uber in india and my preference was specifically because of pricing uh if i am able to find better pricing on uber and also more trust i was able to build with the brand but for a couple of years when i'm living in uh, bay area uh i started using lift that is you can think of it as ola of uh, uh us and i started moving and i hopped on actually to lift and one of my primary reason was actually user experience i absolutely loved how lift as an app was built the color combinations they were using and again a lot of drivers would still remain common so the end uh, party which was serving me for that product was still the same the pricing would still be very close but the factor that what can drive you to hop on to that product uh, would vary but for me it was uh, a really neat experience and i was really feeling connected to it i really liked the color theming like uber is very black color driven uh, uh marketing lift was very pink driven marketing and if you have not used lift you should try using it the accessibility of the app is quite phenomenal in that sense so i think uh, that is one example i see from my case but i think if you look at india's payment space uh, you have so many players coming up uh, paytm still leads but there are players like uh, google pay there are players like amazon pay which are making their footy and if you have seen marketing of google pay especially the campaigns they did around touching some emotional stories about not so recognized indian uh, uh, you know leaders whether they were mountain climbers whether they were uh, other folks uh, they even used sachin uh, it it actually reflects that how a brand which is already big enough was able to connect into the market of course they also offered a good product with with some innovation but a lot of people ended up hopping onto that product because of trust because of uh, maybe privacy concerns because of better experience because of just uh, you know more relationship they were able to build with the brand does it answer okay. manoj yeah yeah thanks okay okay um, another important part is specifically on usability and uh, the next example i'll give is probably going to be a bit controversial because you might have your own uh, favorites but i think the key factor is also specific to you know what manoj just mentioned and i was sharing example that you always end up making these unpaid brand ambassadors people who really vouch for your product who really believe in what you're doing they might not know you but they just truly believe in your product and love using that uh, in a lot of cases they would be paying very heavy for your product so what it means is as a fundamental i might not agree with how they are building their product or you know the branding they are doing but for their customer segment it is truly important so if you are in a company where you are finding this 
separation either you really need to find a way to share your message across right that why uh, moving up ahead from that uh, product definition so branding is a valid idea or there is a mismatch in the company you are choosing and the famous example i always like is apple and microsoft like microsoft often might not have a loyalist but it has a huge base because of the utility value for money uh, it it really provides but if you look at apple there is a portion of people who are adherent supporter i'm a culprit of that they would always buy these products they might still be the people who would crave about apple that they are uh, launching expensive products they are not making enough product improvements but you would still end up investing money because of any factor they are solving uh, like for example for me apple is a dumb person's uh, gadget because the learning curve is so simple that even if you don't know a lot about uh, some of the you know functionalities the onboarding might be easy for you for some people it might be just the build quality for some people it might be privacy but the brand alignment as a product manager you always need to acknowledge and find that sweet spot of customer segment uh, who are really loyal to your product and this is what you should always aim for building because they become brand ambassadors who would do free marketing who would propagate your product values to other people and you would see a lot of products who only grow because of that whatsapp is a great example of that all of us probably use whatsapp uh, we acknowledge it's a secure app we all do video calls on it and they actually were not doing any marketing uh, before they were acquired by facebook even now there is only very minimal marketing you would find whatsapp doing and especially because of their launch in payments into uh, brazil which got halted now or their launch into uh, payments into india which is still in beta but the value of loyal customers is very high and that virality is what as a product manager you should always aim to approach towards i'll try playing this video uh, i'm not sure if it would stream right but i'll just play initial 30 seconds for you to get an idea uh, okay i think you get the gist of it uh, but i think the reason i wanted you to quickly see that is also because uh when now you are learning a lot about design we might not acknowledge that uh the design microsoft might be adopting is cool because uh, companies like apple have really succeeded into not using words but using very little amount of words to be so expressive that it would be very powerful so i think the branding strategy is what i'm inclining towards for you as a product manager to manager to always understand you would always have great brand managers working with you but you always need to be aware of what really appeals to your user in terms of messaging sometimes cluttery might be what your users like sometimes a uh, very clean and neat and very premium is what your customers like but being aware of that factor and always using it right is a uh, something uh, for all of us to learn yeah sorry uh, there was no audio because of the interference of two uh, uh, laptops i was dialed into uh, but yes i would try to send this uh, videos link to piyush and he can circulate uh, for you guys uh, another thing is the topic which i touched briefly when we started uh, specifically on ethics of product management and this topic is very close to me so uh, i might be talking just from uh, you know the personal experiences uh, or personal viewpoints i have but i think with the market and landscape changing so fast the ethics or responsibility of implicit ask customers accept expect from a product are not limited to just legal and compliance things 
and i'm specifically uh, going to call out couple of things which i mentioned about a product being inclusive that when products are you are building are they inclusive of all communities of people are you using colors symbols languages which can be discriminatory to a sect of people uh, and you really need to ensure that you are putting a conscious effort towards that accessibility is still a factor which a lot of apps don't really focus on what it means is people who are uh, who don't have ability to see are they still able to use your product and in in a lot of countries it's a legal requirement for your apps to be completely accessible with voice over with uh, you know uh, other other functionalities and some of these might foray into low priority when you just look at oh it's just 2% of my customer segment oh it's just uh, you know uh generating uh, 1% of my revenue but i think inclusivity should not be driven by these factors your products whether it's an app it's a website you should always be very conscious to ensure that your products are secure if your customers are expecting it to be you don't share their information illegally you are building accessible products and you are not building products that discriminate and especially with things which are happening uh you know across the globe with multiple brands where because of catering to that 98% of the segment they are okay to discriminate with 2% of the user base as a product manager it's your responsibility to voice these things and be that brand ambassador of your own product okay uh now one of the things which i mentioned is about what happens if you don't listen and i think some things are very intuitive for us lack of innovation is one of the most common thing you'll feel across so many companies so many companies fail because of this and one example which i always loved a camera which i have used personally at my home is uh, kodak kodak was very similar to how xerox is like uh, for photocopy when xerox became a word kodak was one such uh, word which really get got inculcated into minds of people but the company actually refused to move digital uh, which was their passion for uh, you know analog photography they were following but what it mean meant is the market was changing so fast even when they wanted to really move on to that they really missed the train uh, you might know a lot of other companies any other companies which quickly comes to your mind other than uh, kodak which you think really failed because they didn't accept the innovation yeah great example nokia blackberry very valid examples anything else which comes to your mind in search engines in in something else yeah skype is a great example bing yahoo ambassador car or could yes very very good examples and uh, one of the common thread you would find in a lot of them is their lack of interest in some sense to innovate and move to the things where people were moving and what i'm inferring with that is as a product manager one place where you should always invest a lot of time is just getting to know what's happening across the industry if industry is moving towards you know uh, ai or ml again i'm not saying use it as a buzzword just to sell your product better but what you need to be conscious about is what value can these products really bring what technologies you really need to use to have a great product experience it can also mean being aware of other technologies which are coming which may not directly impact you let's say uh vr for example are you aware of any consequences that technology becoming uh, accessible to a lot of people would have on your product if yes then you should start thinking about it and you should always have a view point on at what point you would want to move on to that and one of the things is also which a lot of companies invest into is r&d where you would want to do hackathons you would want to have a set of people a very small squad team which is always experimenting on new ideas without waiting for a moment of success so that team's goal is not to build pnl is not to acquire users it is just to see that can your product have some cool factor uh one example i really like is of google pay where uh, there is voice based again it's not the audible voice it's a uh, voice based payment where you can you know there is a toggle which you can move the product didn't really work very well but i recall that when i saw the product and i was speaking to my friends that was one of the buzzwords which everyone was discussing that the company was bold enough to give 50% or more than that on their home screen to a functionality which most of you know their market was not really able to interpret so it it can be a product failure in some scenarios but i think being open to innovation has to be ingrained into uh, you as a product manager now brand perception 
is directly dependent on products you are building but just by building great products you really cannot ensure they would be uh, successful there are a lot of products uh, which have really failed because they were ahead of time like personally for me pinterest always stood out as an example that it was a great product i always loved using it but it was so ahead of time in some senses that uh, when instagram and other companies like let's say even tiktok came up they, they never were able to succeed into that i'm not saying they didn't innovate but i think just how your brand is positioned is also going to uh, make a lot of difference uh, satya mentioned about the timing of launching a product uh, and its importance of success i think very very important factor a lot of things can be symbolic about the launch a lot of things can be about the perception of how people see that product you know specific to that time uh, like for example how the reaction on chinese apps happened in india right now uh, i'm not saying it is right or wrong but what i'm in- inferring is the emotional question of people uh, about a product would actually dictate with whether they would use a product or not so no- just having a good product in market would not really mean a success and that what you need to acknowledge that how you are aware of how branding is done how marketers in your company are aware of their the product value proposition good and you work together with them and one such example is of uh, nano it, it was a great car any one of you would have driven you would acknowledge that okay for the price point it was selling it was a great car but the problem is you really cannot tell people that hey Uh, come here and buy this cheap car because and for a lot of indian households still car is a dream uh, just like house is a dream a uh, car is definitely a dream which they want to achieve in that sense and for a dream of lifetime if you would tell them buy a cheap car it would most certainly would not fall uh, into into the right spot for people and that's what was probably one of the factors nano didn't succeed of course there were a lot of other reasons also it didn't but selling a dream is often going to be what you need to really think when you think about uh, selling a product and importance for a product manager is also because you would be working on communication of the product how you name the product how you talk to the product are you using nouns versus verbs now these nitty gritties might sound similar but small things like using noun versus verbs can actually dictate if people feel connected or if people feel robotic while using your product one example mohit is sharing is about android being the most used uh, os uh, very true uh, i think uh, innovation might again it it depends in this scenario because he's mentioning about kaizen and other os and again uh, there are multiple reasons they didn't succeed and always remember android was not something google built themselves google acquired a company a uh, set of great people who were they were able to also get when they really acquired and that's where some of these uh, fast decisions also come into picture the i think my interpretation of that is also uh, mohit that uh, at at that point of time there was no os in that sense which was open for people to develop very fast if you remember the first launch of iphone when uh, steve jobs launched and it created so much buzz there were i think 14 apps uh, which were built and apple actually worked together with the, those brands to build those apps so those apps were so perfection that people just loved when they started using uh, uh, iphone uh, and its apps the ecosystem also because of that apple decided that they would be so stringent in app development uh, and usability requirements uh, that a lot of app developers could not really uh, jump onto that because of the platform ecosystem they were building and also the reach of iphone being limited in majority of markets versus android offered something which was so open you can just go and publish your app even if you're an independent developer you would be able to propagate your product android was free so a lot of uh, you know companies like even samsung because building os is costly uh, you really need to keep updating it you need to have an army of people working towards it they decided that okay android is the right way a lot of companies would tweak around that android being a uh, you know uh, google allowing that to happen and they would have their own flavors so samsung might have its own flavor of android oneplus might have its own flavor of android but the base still remains same because that comes for free for them in some senses now i just being conscious of time i'll try to move fast one of the things about not listening and what people will always uh, have told you that okay why not to listen to customer 
uh, and I'm not saying don't listen to customer, but don't be blind to what they just said because users would always tell you the problem they are facing. They might have a solution in mind which is specific to them, or they might not have a solution at all. It is your job as a product manager to have enough data, both qualitative and quantitative, to really say what the problem is. Uh, and especially in case of solution, is that solution feasible for a good portion of customers that you are trying to solve for and not for a specific set of uh, users? This example is probably the right descriptor of it and why the 5Y principle is so important for a uh, PM in that case. There is a monument in Washington which uh, was deteriorating. Now that was the problem statement. Now as a product manager, uh, what you would do to that and they were there were there are numerous stories about that monument that they were not able to identify it in one go and they experimented with so many things. But the simple thing was the monument was deteriorating because they were using strong chemicals uh, onto that. But the point was how, why they are really using those strong chemicals. They were using because a large number of birds, uh, uh, they had to clean uh, the bird droppings. Now, why the birds uh, were there in so high number? Because there were spiders. Why there were spiders? They were because of uh, you know a lot of insects being there. And why insects were there was because of the lightning they were doing on the monument. And the solution they actually came out was, oh, let's change the direction and angle of the lights and, uh, you know, avoid insects from even being there. So what I'm inclining to is as a PM, when you are really coming across a problem statement, don't be in a rush to build features. Don't become a feature factory where, you know, you are just trying to see that, okay, how fast you can ship because speed would not really be the only factor that would dictate your success. Uh, let's take an example. Uh, let's say on your website, the conversion rate of, uh, you know, number of users entering the funnel and number of users uh, transacting is decreasing. Uh, now, what would you do? If you simply use five by principle, it might help you, you know, have some framework to find those answers. Uh, let's say you would say, okay, my conversions are reducing because there are customers dropping out in the funnel. Why they are dropping out? They're dropping out because uh, at some screens, the information is not clear enough for them and they decide to go back or leave the transaction at that point. Why they are actually doing that? Because one of the reasons is on review screen, the total amount is not on the first page. You have to scroll for it. A lot of customers get confused. They go back and they end up not doing. So when you start going deeper into that, you would actually be able to find what is the actual behavioral psychological reason of user taking that action. Because see, you're, you are a user, but you might be a high tech user who is using, uh, you know, great gadgets, uh, a very different mindset because you work in tech or you work in a similar field, or you are just in the age where tech is, you know, just a fundamental thing for you to use. But a lot of your users might not be into the same shoes. So I think Putting yourself in customer shoes is a is a great place to start, but also interrogating more uh, when you are even doing customer interviews. And if some of you have done customer interviews, this is one skill to learn, to not have your opinions and biases come into that, but just be a curious person who is sitting in the interview, uh, asking the user, okay, why you did that, uh, how you did that, and just learn from it and process it together as an offline exercise after you have all the inputs. Uh, okay, uh, I will quickly touch on the point Akshat is making about public policy, why I was interested into that. I think uh, not related to the topic, but it's it's just a, I would say a personal interest for me. And uh, I think how I see is product management is not just limited to tech. Uh, if you see how our governments are also changing, tech is becoming a fundamental thing for them. Uh, there would be some product manager who actually built, uh, you know, UPI. There are product managers who have built uh, Aadhaar card we are using. Uh, and a lot of these decisions are not just product management decisions, but they are much broader decisions on how it would impact the public life. Without going into debate of, let's say, Aadhaar card, there were a lot of discussions on how sensitive the Aadhaar number should be. Should it be as sensitive as SSN in US, where you just don't share your SSN uh, with people? Or should it be like, uh, you know, just another number, you would just go on a, uh, on a Kirana store, you would give your card for photocopy. You don't mind if the person makes five more copies and issues wrong SIM cards on your ID. So I think as a product manager, even in those scenarios, I feel public policy in those, uh, you know, products become very important. And uh, it was my interest to learn towards 
how these governmental legal compliance factors can really impact the products we really build yeah uh, power of why and first principle uh, like abhinav is mentioning uh, is is a really uh, good example uh this is uh, one thing you probably would have seen in goa other countries you might have visited uh, and probably the first and second uh, picture you might not have actually even seen this product because what you see is what you see in picture number 3 a lot of times people who build products they are super passionate people they really just love that concept also because it might have been a pain point for them so for example jet ski was built by kawasaki and it was built as a i would say a sports which is not really easy to pursue because it was so hard you see the person in second picture the person is wearing a, a helmet because it was not very secure to ride on that and when they wanted to see that oh, why people are not really even uh, taking uh, their product for a ride they realized that people were not doing it just for you know a sport it was a fun thing for them they wanted to do it with family they didn't want to do it alone uh, they wanted to not really have uh, you know stress or tiredness after doing that fun sport and what ended up happening is what yamaha learned from those products or sidu learned that okay we need to make it easy to sit where people are comfortable we need to make it a family or friend sport where more than one person can be there and we need to build it in a way where people don't feel fatigue after you know they come back from the ride and they should be able to ride it more okay uh i don't see the name but uh, the comment is how do you come across the necessary information regarding regulations any data bases or websites uh for me i personally always refer to the official websites or you know some official credible sources uh, which i think you all can easily identify when you search for that one of the easy way to keep on track is also you know just being a uh, a subscriber of for example for me reddit really helps for me techcrunch really helps and if you are working in a specific market you would end up diving deeper into those things so for example if you are working into uh, indian payment space you have to know how government is changing the regulations about let's say how data localization has to happen for international companies uh how uh you know the the consumer data has to be collected what information can really be collected is kyc going to be mandatory can you do kyc with your aadhar card number or not so those all factors you would have to deep dive as a product manager but i think uh not a specific pick web website but whatever market you are working on i think uh, you would find good credible news sources which would be able to uh, give you that information uh now this is uh, probably some of you might be a big fan of ab test i am personally not a big fan of ab test uh, also because uh, it it has its intrinsic bias coming into picture but it's a great construct for people who use but i think what i'm uh, going to tell uh, you as a feedback is to not use ab test for insights because it just becomes a throwaway term that okay do an ab test and you will just find the answer magically it really does not happen because ab test is not going to give you insights ab test is simply uh, comparing if design a or design b or experience a or experience b which one is better it is not saying that a is the best it is only going to say that a is better than b or b is better than a uh, what we always end up doing is uh, if a and b uh, are not good enough you would never be able to find out that what c is so i think what i'm uh, going to recommend is move your decision making towards the left when i say towards the left uh, into the product development cycle testing with users is a great idea but sometimes you don't really need to make the products live in all examples that's where usability testing that's where interviewing your customers very well that's where being conscious about even if you're sitting in an uber being really getting to know that how that uber driver thinks what are the pain points are they getting paid out on time are they moving to ola because of let's say payouts because of you know customer support uh, or anything else uh, would really help so do ab tests but be conscious that before you do ab test you have really validated it enough with uh, users using prototypes using customer interviews and using you know so many other uh, quantitative surveys you can conduct with uh, users uh 
another buzzword you would end up hearing from a lot of people and especially if you are aspiring product manager don't fall in trap of that is uh, deriving uh, some insight from the data and that's where the bias of correlation and causation would come uh, i would just give you a simple uh, uh, point that trust data but not to the limit that your all your decisions are based on that because sometimes data would only speak what you want it to speak uh, you keep churning data enough it would give you biased uh, inputs also and that's where you really need to separate that okay uh, if you are seeing some correlation into data that because a is happening b is happening mapping whether b is happening because of a is a very important factor if you do that mapping wrong what it means is the decision you would make because of this inference would be fundamentally wrong and biased take an example of uh, these two uh, i found uh, on the internet about apple iphone sales are increasing and people who are uh, dying because of falling from stairs is increasing now these two things are happening together and you see a, a correlation between these two but is that the co causation that because more people are uh, falling off the stairs apple iphone sales are increasing no but this this might be an extreme example but in your journey even in your personal decisions in your product management decisions you would be able to uh, retrospectively look where you might have built a wrong causation and you know would have made a wrong decision at that point of time so i think uh, i'll finish with this i think in summary three recommendations especially if you are an aspiring product manager that pay attention uh, product management is uh, not a domain where you can just be a, a you know expert of one domain there are going to be people uh, who are super experts in one domain let's say compliance of payments but most of the product manager and especially if you're starting your journey you probably would start from a, a generic product manager role which means that you need to invest into learning about user psychology you would need to invest about learning a bit of legal landscape you would have to learn a bit about ux and material design and you know design frameworks into market so be open to that uh, based on your role always pick up something to learn which would help you for your next role better so uh, if if your passion is into data science start learning data science in advance so that you become a better data science product manager because you would still fundamentally need to know all those things talk to your users i cannot stress on this enough uh, a lot of product managers end up becoming feature factory because of what is being told uh, uh, to them and they end up doing that but one of the change which would really come into your product management experience and honestly for your company also even if your company is resistant to it right now be a mouthpiece of that that you need to talk to your users whether it's a formal setup where you are doing interviews whether it's informally you are collecting information from your friends family unknown people but talk to users you would really get to know so much from them uh, and most of your product ideas would start coming from them uh, so invest time into that exercise and i i'm pretty sure it would uh, add a lot of value uh, to you and when you talk to users also be a bit more open minded don't be stuck to your political bias to your religious bias to your user experience bias be very open to what they want uh, and the moment you would acknowledge that it would become very easy and last fundamental rule is to think to not act on every data you really find you need to act responsibly uh, you need to build things which would be right for people uh, and are not going to discriminate uh, some books which i have personally always loved uh, and if you are a product manager aspiring product manager you might have read some but if you have not these are definitely like level 0 books you should read couple of them are from user psychology couple of them are from how startups behave uh, they would really give you insight into when you build a product what you should do i again my personal recommendation is never read products which are written for how to be a product manager uh, you know become a cracking a pm interview in 20 days uh, kind of books i would recommend you to read these books because they would actually give you a framework in your mind on how you think and what you want to change is how you think and how you process information not some cheat code where you just you know prepare into some things and do that um, so yeah i mean read the books which you have not read uh, and yeah if i bored you already and you are already planning to drop out here is a puppy because someone told me okay cute puppies always cheer people up uh, so that's something you can definitely feel happy about and yeah any questions you have reach out to me uh, this is my personal email id anything i can help you uh, in you know 
uh, from my experience uh, we are on like all of us are in uh, together into this so anything i can help you uh, don't be hesitant just reach out to me yeah that was all i had uh, thank you there were some questions which you shared we can either jump on that or if you guys have something just unmute yourself and we can discuss i think discussing would be much better i have removed names from here just to be cognizant that people don't want to share the names uh, but yes if you are comfortable you can just uh, unmute yourself hey saurav hey yeah hi this is prerna uh i have a question uh, so i will be joining a product manager role soon and uh i am not really sure how should i uh establish myself in the first few weeks and first few months can you sh uh, share some tips or your experiences um uh, firstly congratulations um i mean uh, it it would be a fun experience to join a new company if you're joining virtually to them uh i think one of the thing personally i think is uh, going to be helpful is how do you really approach that company in a in a very open mindset the reason i'm stressing this is from your current job if you are already working as a product manager you would have some of the ways of operating which your new company might not have it can be about the process they follow it can be about the speed at which they build it can be about the engineering frameworks they are using uh so i think initial few days like especially 15 to 30 days invest into just learning and not being very strong about your opinion uh that would actually allow you to absorb why they are doing what they are doing and then you can have a better opinion into you know if they are doing something wrong because of course there are there is a reason they have hired you is to you know bring some change build something better uh and they would be open to listening to you but i think uh just being very observant in initial uh, you know month or two would allow you to have much more processed and stronger opinions uh, than being vocal into that the second thing i would say is uh, invest into learning the horizontal spectrum of products they have so for example if you are joining for product a uh, for your role invest a lot onto that but get to meet a lot of people like product managers engineers you would be working with even if you are not going to work with because at some point your path will cross initial days would be lighter for you so schedule one on ones uh, i mean most of the people would never tell you no to you know just have a quick uh, connect uh, invest time in talking to them just getting to know them not just work but you know how they are as a person and honestly for a pm those relationships would be very fundamental to what you would be able to deliver it's it's fine if you let's say i'm an introvert i am not someone who really would talk to a lot of people but uh it's okay to take some effort and try to find out how people in that company think and getting to know them better would really help you be comfortable around those people also got it um hey sir sorry hi um this is kalpi thank you so much for the session i have a quick one as well and i don't want to personalize it a lot so generically how should one approach transitioning to a to an actual product management role from different field and do you think like if somebody is um you know like have been in quant space and more from software engineering side even if having a little bit of consulting experience would kind of should they go to the program management product project management kind of a route how should they approach it because most firms actually look for specific product management experience um especially yeah. if you have been in the corporate career for a couple of years so how can you differentiate yourself and still be at the same level while you are applying for the product management role yeah a fair point and i i agree that yes some companies do that but i think that mindset is changing very fast when companies start acknowledging that there is no secret sauce to be product managers and uh, one thing you would also need to start acknowledging is your skill set in other domain is actually going to be an asset so yes for a pm role you would always want to learn what that company needs now let's say for example if you are a data scientist right now you might want to learn a lot about design you might want to learn about uh, how marketing and pnl and all those things would work so i think that learning part would be very important for those companies and that's where the role of let's say either formal learning or informal learning would come into picture but 
I would just say that I think that mindset is changing very fast. Just like mindset of you know hiring from some specific colleges is going away very fast. Mindset of not being stuck to you need only a PM experience person is also changing, and that's why you would see people who are rocket scientists being product managers, people who have done PhDs in physics uh, being product managers. And I'm just quoting some of the people I work with. There are people who have worked, studied astrophysics, and they would be moving to that. So I think you need to learn those skills, uh, but. identify companies who acknowledge you for your skill and sometimes let's say finding a data science product manager role might be easy for you to enter in uh, then let's say a, a ux product manager got it hi sir uh, this is a venkat here a uh, quick question hey. again on the similar lines um, so generally what um, uh, you know the recruiters expect is uh, the domain experience so you you have the product manager product owner experience already but you know when you uh, uh, apply for certain companies they expect domain knowledge so you would have already cracked in several i mean worked in several domains and you you are a successful pm or po however just because you don't have certain domain experience they uh, you know they they don't consider you how do we yeah. manage such such uh, scenarios yeah and i think that is probably much more prominent than the first um, case of you know uh, non product manager to product manager transition especially because uh, some of the domains take time for you to learn uh, for example if someone is a compliance product manager uh, they would have thoroughly invested a lot of time into going through that and some companies don't want you to give that amount of let's say initial few months to be uh, you know into that learning phase uh, so do i agree but i think the way to start into that if let's say your goal is to be a product manager into let's say compliance uh starting in that direction is really helpful because i think what companies often look for is not just your domain experience in past but till the time you are able to have that knowledge and that you know interest to really learn that fast most of the companies would be willing to give that uh, you know give that opportunity because just that knowledge is not what companies look for uh, at least you know companies i have worked for they would always acknowledge the hunger you would have to learn and you know bring that change part of it but uh, if it's a domain specific role there is no way to avoid you not learning about that and i think one of the questions someone asked before on you know public policy or law for me also in times in that direction that because i wanted to work in some of those fields i started by learning those fields first so to to your question venkat for example the reason i studied uh, cyber law at nlsiu bangalore it's a law college in bangalore was because i wanted to work in that domain and when i was learning my company saw okay i have interest in that domain and i got to work on gdpr gdpr is the data compliance uh, uh, protection law in europe so i think yes for different company it can be slightly harder but i would always say that starting structured programs or unstructured programs you know just watching youtube videos consuming enough content would uh, help you really prepare well for it yeah uh, thanks sir yeah uh, hello sir hello hey hi uh, thanks for the session so i have a same uh, question in line with the transition uh let's say for a project man to to transition into a project management we have a pmp certification which will be have a justification that we have an enough knowledge uh to have the project project management in case of product management uh what kind of justification we can give or uh, to get into a role kind of a product owner or a product uh, manager so i mean uh, are you referring to the learning path the individual yeah the learning path? yes exactly exactly the learning path let's say i'm working in a in one of the product company uh, where uh, uh, where from my current position to the product management will be like uh, you know it will be like a difficult to, uh, difficult thing as it is like uh, we have a three to four steps yeah. away uh, in that in such cases like uh, uh, in terms of project management yes with the pmp i can able to achieve the project management uh, profile but uh, for a product manager uh, like what kind of uh, justification or what kind of uh, you know the the knowledge we acquired to showcase that the knowledge we have in terms of product management like how to showcase to the company or the whom that we are working on 
yeah uh, and again uh, i think i have my bias in this so i'll clarify that uh, you know in advance uh, i'm not always a big proponent that you always need to go into structured learning but you know structured learning is really important for some people uh, especially because that gives you a rhythm that gives you access to let's say uh, people mentor uh, you know uh, people you would just want to learn from so if if you are a person who likes structured programs i think you should totally look for and again it might vary that what in structured program you really need uh, so like you mentioned that okay there is pmp now pmp does not really make you a program manager it just gives you how programs need to be designed how programs need to be run uh, that is the basic construct it gives you but it would still not really give you the experience of managing let's say a complex uh, a program into a, a, a big company or a you know a fast growing company similarly in product if you know your goal is to learn let's say generic product management you are a fresh graduate uh, you might want to do some generic programs if you are let's say a 10 year professional a software engineer uh, an architect into a company already and transitioning into a pm role that would still remain your strength and you might want to just become a technical uh, product manager by let's say doing some uh, something on design by doing something on business by doing something on accounting which would actually give you that edge of other areas you are good at other than you know the architect or software engineer role you are good at so again uh, i think i would not personally be biased towards one thing i would say that identify what kind of a learner you are if you can uh, you know uh, take that financial uh, uh, you know uh, liability how you can really you know uh, move forward in that direction and choose the right program but one thing i would only say is be really open to learning and be open to learn at least one or two new skills every year uh, where you are either investing through formal education or informal education but something new you should be able to account that okay in this year i learned uh, this new thing uh, that would just simply solve a lot of things because over a period of 2 3 4 years you would have learned a lot of uh, things even though you might not transition into jobs as a software engineer knowing business knowing pnl all those things would still help you so i think uh, b- build that uh, yearly goal of having one or two things really uh, well learned and in that case you might not really you know want to go into uh, uh, that area where you would say that okay now today i have to start something okay thanks thanks hey saurabh hey uh, saurabh uh, hey. so uh yeah, you go okay thank you uh, thank you for the session uh, digressing from the current trail of questions uh, i just wanted to know given like you spoke about uh, to know more about your users or interview them um, so uh, n- like asking question around getting the insights from there uh, if you have like if you have a request uh, from large number of users about particular feature versus uh, Uh, any feature you are looking forward which is more in line with the vision of the company um, so how should you ideally be going about it should you like it might it can it can be a feature which is like more prevailing on other platform that's why the user are asking for it on your platform as well versus uh, something that you think will uh, better the experience or is it something totally different so uh, which should you prioritize or how should you go about uh, like building those features yeah yeah uh very fair question and i think uh, uh we all really come across this very often so my my answer is simple and how i think is your loyalty lies to your customers uh and then to your company so your first goal is to do right for the customer and ensure that your decisions are in that direction and it's not wrong to take inspiration from your competitor or even building a similar feature on your product because you would eventually have to do it uh, if your customers really need that feature on your platform so i think prioritizing that is is a different approach i would recommend and again going back to what really they are asking because for example if uh, let's say for example snapchat had stories now a lot of platforms have actually i would say um, take an inspiration or copied that product into their ecosystem and they are actually doing better than that product itself now that doesn't mean they did something wrong yes we can discuss about uh, how ethical was it did they breach any copyright uh, was there any patent they breached uh, in you know doing that action uh, but when your customers are asking for that feature you still need to cognizantly look that are they really asking for just ability to share your stories or they are asking for something more 
uh, so even though your product you know problem might be ability to share you know a quick story how you share uh, what customizations are relevant with your platform might still vary considerably so you should still start from the product discovery process and again if you're not familiar with it i would recommend you to read just uh, search on google about product discovery how it happens what are the steps still follow all the steps because the inspiration might be coming from an existing feature inspiration might be coming from a customer problem uh, inspiration might be coming from your personal uh, experiences but going through that journey would help you iterate that product and the end output might be very different than uh, you know what your competitor was building and actually that is going to give you the edge because there would be some people who are loyal to you who would start using that feature but the way to make other users who are not even using your competitor uh, or using your competitor to move to your platform would be to build that differentiating factor uh, and and that differentiating factor actually would be the only way you can succeed uh, i personally don't think that uh, having your roadmap inclined to what your competitors are building ever has succeeded for a lot of companies it might for one or two features but not in a broad sense yeah. okay thank you so much hi saurav hey Um, uh gokul here can you hear me yeah i can okay thanks sir so sir actually my question is uh, to be you know as a product manager sometimes you have to respond responsible to onboard your first 100 to 1000 customers so yeah. we like to talk about the, what is the quickest step to you know get to that level of you know onboarding your first 1000 customers in a b2c sector uh so i would break it into two parts one is okay. who do you want to onboard uh, because when you are building a new product you would have a specific customer segment in mind you are building for so let's say in your product discovery when you were building that product you identified that okay the problem statement you are solving is prominent in 21 to 28 year old uh, young people who are single and that might be uh, let's say a majority of customer segment you would want to acquire so i think when you want to acquire your first set of users being aware of who are the people who are going to really use your product first uh, is is going to be the key another thing is there is always going to be an intrinsic resistance in using a new product now the people who are j- really jumping onto a new product uh, are going to be people who are open to experimentation and they would actually become the key for getting the initial feedback so you really need to identify which segment of people are more open to try and then you know uh, propagate that uh, if you end up targeting the set of users and you're building for people who are actually laggards so if you see you know the product growth cycle it starts with a set of users who are early adopters there are people who would be late adopters there are people who would be laggards who would you know just be adopting at a very late stage you don't want to target the laggards you know as the focus area for launching a new product you really want to find that segment which are early adopters and would be open to you that is part 1 part 2 is okay. how viral the product can be now product growth is not a very prominent uh, role in a lot of indian companies or you know global companies yet but if you would talk to you know great growth product managers one of the things they really put effort is not just you know the product manager has built the product but the product growth manager would probably invest a lot of time into finding what is that factor that is going to make this thing viral now that virality can be something cool in it the virality can be very high utility uh, it can be the messaging it can be the emotional connect it can be the branding uh, or you know it can be just offers how you give offers to people uh, because just giving cash back giving money back to user uh in some senses might work but it's not a sustainable way there is a point where you know your money would burn out and you would want customer loyalty but how you use it is going to be a key for example a lot of companies use refer a friend very effectively because uh you might have seen this new domain coming up where you can register you know email i'll not mention because it would be a biased uh, example but people are just sharing because it's an invite only thing uh and it just created a buzz for them now this is unpaid marketing but someone over there found out that sweet spot that okay who are these people if i share with them they are influencers they would tell that oh i got this cool email id uh, and i have five invites uh, and i can only give to five people and then they can give to five people and just creates that uh, reaction uh, over there so i think in product one of the elements is 
getting that growth and virality market especially when you are uh, you know the in the initial stage of growth of course growth product managers do a lot of work in later stage of product also but in initial mm-hmm. stage as a as a early product manager also you need to have uh, you know that growth and virality mar- uh, mindset understood okay thank you so much sir hey sir i'm sorry sir so um, uh so i am like trying to transition from data engineering and data science background to uh, product management and whenever i try to build a resume it just comes off as an ex data engineer or, or an ex data scientist but not but uh, how to like tra- convert and make it look like it's for an aspiring product manager yeah i was discussing this uh, with with one uh, one another person uh, uh, last to last week and uh, the person is also a data scientist and uh, was planning to transition into product management uh, in in a major uh, tech company here and i think one of the thing really which works is firstly to see that why do you really want to move into product management and which area again going back to the same point because if your company has similar roles for example you are a data engineer and if you have a data product manager uh, who you think is good uh, and you can learn from one of the things to start from might be to start being that person who works more closely with the existing product manager uh, what that gives you a leverage is it's a no risk high return kind of scenario where you are just taking more responsibility let's say being the scrum master of the team for example or being the uh the person who is actually taking some responsibility from the product manager and trying to deliver uh, those things that would give you a very simple uh, learning curve to just get introduced into the field uh let's say taking ownership of uh, reporting on let's say uh, user journey and and the funnel uh, if assuming let's say you are not already doing that so i think taking some part of the responsibility what your pm is already doing might be a good start because uh, that would be easy for you to do uh and everyone would most likely you know acknowledge the curiosity you would have uh, if they see that you would be able to add value uh another thing would also be if you want to be a data product manager or you want to be something else uh repeating my answer but i think you really need to find that sweet spot where you have enough knowledge to justify to your company or another company to really move you to that role uh and that makes that decision easy your company would be able to trust you more but for a external company they would want to see that passion see that you know base of knowledge which they think they can build on because a lot of startups don't really always hire uh, existing product managers they just want right people they want people who fit into their culture they want people who would learn on the go and who just have passion for that domain for example when i joined my first company career 360 it is into edtech uh, space i was not really a product manager before uh, i had passion for education uh, the founder recognized and he was okay to give me a chance and i'm sure you would be able to find uh, your you know that area you really want to move into but don't keep a generic statement that uh, in, when you even make your plan that okay to be a product manager be a bit more specific that okay what are the areas uh, you would want to be in and one of the models which really helps is ikigai so i also got introduced to it recently uh, it's just a framework for you to put your thoughts in a structured way i think it's a japanese construct try to put your thoughts into it uh, it it might not help you a lot uh, if you have already done a similar exercise but it would just give you what might be easy for you to crack where you would be happy also uh, because you don't want to enter just a product manager role where you end up you know uh, being not so happy can you repeat the name of the framework yeah it's called ikigai i k i g a i i think okay thank you uh hi sorup hey hi mohit here uh sorup so i actually work for a b2b company where uh, uh we need to make a business case in uh in relation with the customer and get the uh, handle requirement so i just want to understand if i am working in a b2c company and uh, how do i is there any way to quantify the mindfulness that when do i know that i need to launch the first mvp of the product and it is enough it is enough requirement in data with me that i can work on it to launch it in the market uh you said it's a b2b product no it's a b2c product okay b2c yeah, okay yeah. um uh, so 
I think uh, MVP is uh, is a term which has been used loosely for a, a, a you know a lot of things in that sense. But I would just say that MVP does not mean that the product. vision has to be smaller in that sense but it is just you know deciding at what point you can really release and personally i am in favor of releasing sooner and getting feedback then you know keep building on top of it and then releasing and then realizing that okay this is not what they actually wanted so you really need to uh, see that okay let's say you have a product uh, and is there a way you can test it with 100 people because you would already be i'm assuming you know testing in that case with friends family and you know uh, the employee segment uh, but is it possible for you to just release an alpha share it with 100 people you you know uh, you can share in your network on linkedin or somewhere else and they can share you feedback that can be one simple start of an mvp what that gives you is a very early adopter feedback of what they are looking for but remember that can be biased because that is a very small set of people Uh, who might not be the target segment for you so identifying target segment in that case would be different but at least that alpha would give you some more insights into what more you should build before you make it accessible now let's say uh, it's an app you go on to play store you make it a beta you expose it to let's say 1000 uh, people and then you start slowly ramping uh, and then you are you know in parallel also building more features uh, more things onto that so in my recommendation you really need to find uh, those set of people who can start sharing that feedback early and then incrementally you know build on top of it but of course you don't want to offer a product uh, you know which is not even adding value so even if your mvp of the product i would define as even if it is solving one important pain point which is not getting solved by an existing product or uh, you know the existing product experience is so bad that people are not really able to use it very well you should go into market in some sense even with limited set of users uh because you would get to know that people who are actually having this problem would they actually use your product or not or there are some fundamental problems with your product and then you can keep ramping uh, and adding more features and doing that but i i think testing early is always uh, going to be a helpful step to take all right sir thank you so much S- sort of one question so i, I think you must have been uh, uh, involved in uh, several product launches so yes. what are the kind of challenges that you you have faced and how did you handle them uh, probably a couple of them uh i think uh, the launch structure would vary i'm just thinking of an example which i can use but uh, so okay so let me take uh, an example without um, quoting the specifics uh, often what happens in the go to market strategy is we end up not really accounting for a lot of factors in advance and uh, the scale of what the product is really capable of if you have not defined those things in advance the judgment of go to market and product launch would most likely be uh, wrong and i would just touch on the next question which uh, someone else had in uh in in the sheet specifically on at what point you really define the kpis of product and that probably for me personally relates to the product launch success or failure especially when you are designing even you know the basic prd of the product what you want you would define some kpis how you would measure who you are targeting to uh even though you might not know the exact quantification of the kpi but you would still have some goals that okay at 20% ramp i want to reach out to 2 million users and have at least 10% sign ups uh and of course there would be some data backing up that okay why 10% conversion and you know why exposing to 20% people at this point of time uh but the first step into that launch is specially dependent on what you are really trying to measure out of that so let's say i'm launching a feature about paying with voice am i really you know uh, in in a state that the product is not giving bucks the product uh, has a strong value proposition for let's say people who like using voice so am i able to target people who are using some voice devices in that sense and again some of the data finding is easy some of that is hard but uh, to to me that product plan especially becomes a three part step one what is the kpi i am trying to meet uh, 
have I defined those KPIs enough that, okay, uh, in, in terms of time frame, how much I'm trying to achieve. The another part of that is when do I launch? Uh, what is the timing of it? Where all do I launch? And how do I reach out to people? Like, do I just release it on my platform? Do I do some marketing of it? Uh, do I give some incentives to people to use it? And that has to be spec'd out at, at a go to market plan level. The third thing is how you really track those things. Now, when I say tracking, uh, it of course would be corresponding to that uh, KPIs uh, you would have defined, but it also is using that feedback very quickly to put it back into your product backlog and iterating on it fast. Because especially in go-to-market launches, you would not just launch a feature completely to 100%. And if you are used doing it, uh, probably you know you might want to look at if you want to adopt a better ramping strategy. Because if you expose something to too many people together, they might end up making a perception and uh, you would want to learn from them, reiterate on them, and then you know ensure that when you go to a broader segment, you are able to drive very positive sentiments into it. Now, whether you drive the initial positive sentiment with or without rewards, incentives, with virality, without virality, all those factors probably would become a reason at what stage you ramp further. So you need to have getting criteria that, okay, from 10% to 20%, I would ramp when I'm meeting these kind of results. And if I'm not meeting, I would reiterate on it and I would uh, you know, make some changes to, to that. Sorry, I didn't add a specific example, but I hope it added some value to you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Shar. Yeah, so thanks a lot for taking out time and conducting the session for pragmatic leaders. I'm sure everyone would have some concrete takeaways from this session. Uh, lastly, I would like to thank all the participants for taking out time and uh, staying with us. Uh, so uh, I'm sharing link of our YouTube channel and Slack community in the chat section. You can join our community and a recording of this session will be published on our YouTube channel. I'll share link with you uh, on Slack once it's live. So yeah, that's all from mine.